LeBron, what's your decision? Um, in this fall, man, this is, this is very tough. Um, in this fall, I'm going to take my talents to South Beach and um, join the Miami Heat. In your mind, Miami, if we're like playing devil's advocate or we're second guessing it, Miami was not an option. What is this? What is your second choice? I would have went to Chicago. Chicago. What's going on, everyone? You are listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're all doing well, guys. I know what you're thinking. Stop living in the past. Stop trying to revise history. Stop thinking about all of the what ifs and what could have been. But with the Bulls taking on LeBron James and the Lakers tonight, I couldn't help but think what might have happened had the summer of 2010 free agency looked a little differently. It's actually crazy to me that that was over 10 years ago now, and I feel old even just talking about it. But before I rewrite history, let me first actually just provide some real history leading up to that summer of 2010. Now, going into the 2009-10 season, it was known that the 2010 free agency class was going to be one of the greatest ones the league had yet seen, featuring LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, Amari Stoudemire, Dirk Nowitzki, Joe Johnson, David Lee, Carlos Boozer, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, among many others. It was an incredible free agency class. Now, obviously, LeBron was the number one prize for that. And it was questioned throughout the league that if the Cavs couldn't win a championship, would LeBron bounce and sign with a different team? The Cavs, of course, finished with the best record in the East, and they looked poised to make a title run, but fell to the Boston Celtics in six games in the second round. And most felt it was likely he was going elsewhere. Now, you also had Chris Bosh who was an elite big man playing on the Toronto Raptors, a perennial all-star, an all-NBA player, but his team really couldn't make it much of a push and a deep run into the playoffs, so it was all but assumed he would likely be going to another team. And then, of course, you had Dwayne Wade, who at the time was a top five player in the league. Some would even argue he was the second best player in the league behind LeBron James, the only of the major free agents who was an NBA champion, and of course, Wade was a Chicago native. Now for the Bulls going into that season leading up to the summer of 2010, they were a young and up and coming team. They were being coached by Vinny Del Negro. They had a second year rookie of the year in Derrick Rose, a defensive beast who was in his third year in Joakim Noah. And you had a talented wingman, a great defender in Luol Deng. The Bulls young core they were continuing to develop but really couldn't make that leap to contending status just yet. They were bounced from the first round of the playoffs by none other than LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers that season. So with the Bulls growing young core and the fact they had enough cap space to sign at least one max player, possibly two, it was clear they had the ability to go after at least one of these top free agents in LeBron, Dwayne Wade, or Chris Bosh. And leading up to July 1st, when free agency officially began, it was rumored there was strong interest from these three guys to team up in Chicago, partially because Wade was from Chicago and wanted to play in his hometown. Again, I say this was rumored, this was never confirmed. Bosch and LeBron, they wanted to play together with Wade, and the Bulls had the ability to make the money work, but they likely would have had to part ways with Luol Deng to free up enough cap space and probably some other players as well. But of course, We all know what ended up actually happening. LeBron took his towns to South Beach. Chris Bosh followed suit. And Wade, of course, re-signed, making it one of the best trios in NBA history. The Miami Heat ended up going to four straight finals, winning two of those. And the Bulls had to settle for Carlos Boozer. Now, the Bulls made a huge leap despite missing out on all of the free agents. Uh, Derrick Rose went on to win the MVP that following season. Noah became a Defensive Player of the Year and a two-time All-Star. And Luol Deng became an All-Star as well. Uh, The Bulls would finish with the best record in the league despite the big three of the Miami Heat. Uh, This is after being coached by Tom Thibodeau in that 2010-11 season, but fell to the big three big Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals in five games. And then the following season, The Bulls were right back to where they left off, finishing with the best record again, but this time, the unthinkable happened. Rose tore his ACL in the first game of the playoffs, and the rest is history from there. The Bulls never really fully recovered from that injury, despite making a bit of a run in 2015. But guys, what if we rewrote history? 
What if the summer, the 2010 summer free agency turned out a bit differently? What if Chris Bosh, what he said at the beginning of this video actually happened? What if all of the three of LeBron, Wade, and Bosh all joined the Chicago Bulls in 2010 when all players were at the height of their prime? It would mean we would have had to sacrifice Luol Dang at a minimum, Kyle Korver and Carlos Boozer obviously would not be joining, and we would probably have to give up Todd Gibson as a result as well, but come on, this is to get LeBron James, D-Wade, and Bosh. So it's more than worth it. So if this happens, that leaves us with a starting lineup of Derrick Rose, Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Chris Bosh, and Joakim Noah. And let's not forget, this is uh, to go with uh, a well-known, the well-known bench mob that we remember from those days, which included guys like Ronnie Brewer, CJ Watson, Omer Ashik. So it's not like they wouldn't have had the depth either. I mean, this team is significantly better than those Miami Heat squads that went to four straight finals and won two titles hands down. I mean, at the time, in the summer of 2010, no one expected Rose to break out the way that he did in the following season and win MVP still on his rookie contract. Now, granted, Rose likely doesn't win the MVP that season with those three guys added because any success would have been clouded by the fact that they had all three of those other all-stars. And on top of that, Rose isn't going to you know, put up the same numbers he did in 2011 with all of that additional talent on the roster. Now, the one challenge this roster would have had, and I'm sure all of you are going to be screaming at it in the comments, is that these guys wouldn't be able to coexist with Rose. LeBron, Wade, and Rose are all ball-dominant players, and yes, that is 100% true, so there would be a bit of a conflict for these players in managing expectations with one another and establishing clear roles in the court. But I would have to think that if LeBron and Wade were able to do this and make it work in Miami, and they do it, and they did it well, they would have to be able to make it work with Rose to ensure he gets touches, the touches that he needs, be the main ball handler, and utilize LeBron and Wade to their strengths playing off the ball. Not all the time, but more so than they generally uh, were used to doing. So guys, with this kind of lineup in an era that was not dominant on outside shooting, an era of basketball like it is today, I don't see how this team doesn't become a dynasty and win multiple championships. I mean, if the Miami Heat, the big three of the Miami Heat, who never really had a deep roster in all four of those years could win two titles, the same big three to go along with Rose and Noah, I honestly don't see how this doesn't absolutely dominate the league and win four straight championships in those first four years. And with winning four straight titles, you know LeBron wouldn't leave to go to back home to Cleveland. I mean, one of the main reasons LeBron left Miami after that last loss in the finals was not because he wanted to go home and that it was bigger than basketball. That's all garbage. No, no, LeBron left because the Heat team was aging. Bosch was starting to get injured. They didn't have the cap space to re-sign all of the th big three and LeBron didn't want to take a pay cut anymore. You know, he made it very clear that he felt he deserved a max contract, which he did. And he would have had to take another pay cut to make sure that that team all stayed together. And Cleveland was actually a better basketball situation for him because they had a young and up and coming Kyrie Irving. They had just gotten the number one pick, which they would later trade for Kevin Love. No, Cleveland was just simply a better destination for LeBron to win. So it always bothers me when people act like LeBron did such a noble thing, you know, to leave his team in Miami and to go back home to Cleveland to try to win a title for his hometown because it was bigger than basketball. No, the guy left for a better situation to give him a better chance at winning. But anyway, if the Bulls win four straight titles with the big three and Rose and Noah, keep in mind, by this time, you have Jimmy Butler growing and coming into his own. Now, whether his development would have been slowed by the fact that he would have seen a lot less minutes as a result of these star players is probably likely. So I don't think Jimmy would have been you know, uh, the player that he is going into 2015 that we would have seen now. Now, the other question in all of this is guard packs. The team would still have been run by guard packs, and you would probably think that they would have somehow found a way to mess this up and not get this team to stay together all of these years. And you know what? You're probably right. 
Knowing how cheap they were, how horrible they were with player relationships and team culture, it's likely this team wouldn't have stayed together beyond the initial four year contract term. But let's say for a moment they didn't screw it up, the team stays intact. Now by this time Bosch is starting to suffer from those blood clot issues, Wade is also starting to decline, but the Bulls would still have the best player in the league in LeBron James, they would still have Rose and Noah. Now we're also assuming this means Rose never gets injured, which you could argue maybe he wouldn't or at least not as bad because he wouldn't have had to been relied upon so much in those early years of the Bulls and not had to play so many minutes. But even that's a bit of a stretch and Rose ultimately, you know, ended up becoming an injury prone player anyway. But you keep these guys and they start going against the Warriors dynasty in 2015 and man, you have some exciting basketball. Two incredible teams that were very different in terms of the way, you know, in their style of play. But going against each other year after year, the Warriors and the Bulls, that's some good stuff right there. Anyway, I'm getting way ahead of myself. We could speculate about this all day and the video could go on for hours. The point is, the Bulls would have been brought back to the glory days of the 90s. I know it wouldn't be the same thing, but you're talking a multiple title team had this 20 free agency work, 2010 free agency worked out a bit differently. Of course, there's so many hypotheticals thrown out in this scenario. It's possible the team chemistry doesn't work at all and the Bulls fall apart with that roster after a year or two. There could have been major injuries that set the team back. This also assumes that the big three would have had a huge pay cut, even more so than what they did with the Miami Heat because Rose would have commanded a big payday after his rookie scale contract expired. And of course, Gar Pax is managing the team, so who knows what would have happened with that. So I acknowledge all this. It's just fun to talk about hypotheticals and what could have been. Well, fun, but also depressing if you're a Bulls fan, because I honestly think this would have been the closest opportunity the Bulls had at winning titles again since the 90s. Anyway, the Bulls will be taking on the Lakers later this evening, starting at 9 p.m. Central. Obviously going to be a tough matchup for the Bulls, especially given they're still shorthanded. And at least at the time of this recording, LeBron and Anthony Davis will be playing. It's always been kind of a question mark how many games they'll actually play this season given they had a very short offseason with the finals ending in October. I won't go into too much detail on my keys to the game because this video is already long enough as it is, but essentially, Bulls players just need to play with heart and effort, take care of the ball, play smart basketball, and remember, they're the underdog. Not many people are going to be expecting them to win this game, so just go in and play your best like you have nothing to lose. That's all I've got for you guys for now. Like I said, I'm going to try and have a live stream chat during the game tonight, so be on the lookout for that. Be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan as I post daily Bulls content. Thanks again, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.